Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels and living a more intentional life. Today is Easter Sunday. I will be uploading this video on Wednesday. And Easter always makes me think of my mom and miss her just a little bit more than I usually do. Because as a little girl, I spent a lot of time in the kitchen with my mom. It's where I get my love of cooking. And at Easter time, uh, she would make Portuguese sweet bread as part of our Easter tradition. And I have been looking for a way to make this recipe vegan because the traditional recipe has a fair number of eggs in it and butter. And I think that I have a recipe that will work. I have never tried it before, to be honest with you. I thought maybe we would just try it together for the first time and see how it is. The uh, Portuguese sweet bread is it's a lot like a, a brioche bread, which is a little sweeter, um, but it because of the eggs, it always had more of a yellow uh, color to it and it was delicious. And the recipe that my mom would make for Easter was extra special because she would make the dough, we would make the dough, and then she would roll out a round of it as the base. And then she would take uncooked eggs in their shell and she would lay them around this base. And then taking strips of the dough that she had rolled out, she would basically lay the strips out in a cross hatch pattern and form a mound over the eggs on this base and then she would bake it. And the, the treat was at Easter, on Easter morning for breakfast, was if you got a wedge of the bread and it had an egg in it, you scored. It was, uh, it was extra special. And the baking process would cook the egg. So you would crack the egg, get it out of its shell, it would be cooked and you would eat that with the street bread. And that was an Easter tradition that I loved and always looked forward to because growing up, as growing up in a Catholic family, Easter was a religious holiday versus a chocolate bunny and Easter egg type of a holiday. And food, obviously, as with so many cultures, food is an integral part of each of these types of celebrations. So I'm gonna try this sweet bread recipe with you today. I'm gonna to hope it works. I think either way, it'll be delicious. So let me show you what we're gonna use and then we're gonna make it. As with most bread recipes, there aren't a lot of ingredients in this recipe. We're gonna use this uh, quick rise instant yeast. I believe if you're using regular yeast, it'd be one and a half teaspoons. I'm gonna use one packet of this. We need some margarine, so I'm gonna use this one. Some non-dairy milk, I'll use oat. I think that will work really well in this recipe. Some brown sugar, white flour, vanilla extract, and a little bit of salt. That's all there is uh, as far as appliances. I'm going to use my KitchenAid stand mixer with the dough hook. It's one of the reasons I love this appliance and uh, because then I don't have to knead by hand. You can knead it by hand. I'm sure it would work just fine. A bowl to mix your flour and salt in, wet measuring cup, a dry measuring cup, and a tablespoon and a teaspoon. And that is about it. The first thing we're gonna do is get our yeast activating. And I am going to use one and a quarter cups of non-dairy milk. I'm going to use the oat milk. I am going to warm it up a little bit in the microwave because that will help things get going. So this is just lukewarm. So I'm going to pour this right into the bowl of the sand mixer. Sorry for that sound. And then I'm going to put the package of yeast in there. So I'm wearing my wired mic and I'm doing that because I've had a couple people comment that they can't really hear me when I don't use it and I have a mic that I just put on the camera here but apparently it's not good enough so I am going to invest in a wireless lavalier mic but I don't have it yet so you're just gonna have to be patient with me right now I just have my leash on so I hope that's okay I've got the one and a quarter cups of milk in here that is just slightly warm. I've got the package of uh, yeast and I'm gonna put three tablespoons of brown sugar. And I'm gonna pack the tablespoons down. And I'm gonna give that a little whisk just to get everything incorporated. 
and then I'm going to set that aside and let that bloom let the um, let the yeast start to activate and in the meantime I am going to mix into this bowl our flour and our salt and we want four cups of flour Oof. and make sure you make a mess like I do every single time for some reason I cannot open this jar of flour without having it explode that was three right yeah that was three note to self don't talk and measure flour at the same time so four cups <laughs> and one teaspoon of salt And then let's just give that a good mix so that the salt is incorporated. And then we'll just wait for that yeast to activate. I have melted half a cup of margarine here, which actually is one of these sticks. So that's ready to go. I just want to show you the yeast you can see that it's getting nice and foamy so that's ready to go so I guess we're ready to mix everything together let's get our stand mixer this is one of the best things I ever bought from my kitchen if I had to give up all other appliances it would and just keep one it would really be a toss-up between my Vitamix blender and this KitchenAid stand mixer and I would find a way to keep them both because I love them both what can I say? All right, so into here, I'm going to add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. So I don't think this is going to have the same color as the sweet bread that I grew up with because that was always quite yellow from all of the egg yolks, but we'll see. And I'm going to add that half cup of melted margarine or whatever vegan butter that you're using into there. And we're going to put this on low and slowly add the flour mixture. And then I'm going to knead it anywhere between five and 10 minutes, depending on how it looks until it's nice and elastic and it's absorbed all the flour and then we will let it rise. So I'm gonna let that knead for like I say about five, 10 minutes and I'll be back. So I've let that knead for about almost 10 minutes. So I'm gonna take it off here. And I've got a, a dishcloth that I have dampened and I'm going to set this over top and leave it on the counter here for about an hour and a half until it's risen. And when it does that, I will come back and show you what we're going to do next. All right. It's been an hour and a half. Let's have a look at how much this is risen. Look at that. Isn't that satisfying? So I'm going to just, um, Turn it off onto the countertop here and then divide it in two and make two little mounds. I'm not going to try braiding it like my mom did or like, you know, I've seen on the YouTubes because I am just not that patient, to be honest with you. And when my mom made this recipe, when she made the sweetbread recipe, just in general, she would just form it into um, little loaves, round loaves. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm not gonna knead it a whole lot. I'm just gonna shape it a little bit, divide it in half. Yes, I do have a pastry cutter thingy. I just, again, I'm too lazy to go and grab it. So this is all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna shape it into a nice little round ball 
And then I'm going to set this on a tray with parchment paper over here. So I'm not expecting this to taste exactly like the sweet bread that I grew up with, but if it's a good recipe for a sweet bread, then I will definitely make it again. I might add some maple syrup to it the next time because I'm Canadian and I do put that shit on everything. <laughs> there we go. So now here's what they look like. And what we do, we're going to do now is make a little glaze for the top with a little bit of non-dairy milk and a little bit of maple syrup. The new maple syrup is going to be in there somewhere. Normally, again, this recipe would have an egg wash that was brushed over it, but we're not using eggs, so we're just going to do this. And what this will do is uh, help it brown but it will also give it a really nice sheen. So as soon as this is, has risen for the second time, we're just gonna throw it right in the oven. So now I'm gonna let that sit for half an hour to, for its second rise. I have the oven preheating to 395. I don't know why 395, but a few recipes that I looked at for sweet bread uh, used a fairly high temperature. Uh, and only 25 minutes to cook. So we'll see how that goes um, and I'll see you back here in half an hour. So these are ready to go in the oven. I'm going to put them in for 25 minutes and then I'm going to check them and we'll see how we'll see how they look when they're done. I probably should have <laughs> I probably should have started this process earlier. It's getting late and it's a Sunday night and I still have to let those cook and cool off but it'll still be worth it. It's been 25 minutes. Let's see what this looks like. Oh my goodness. Ooh, look at that. Mm. Those, smell, those smell really good. I don't know that it's going to be exactly like the sweet bread that my mom used to make, but I think this is gonna be a recipe that I'll want to make again. So I'm going to let these cool and then I will insert a picture of uh, what it looks like how, when I slice it because I think that that is going to be delicious. Okay guys, it's the next day so I'm going to give this a try. Please forgive my messy hair. And I've just got butter on it. Mmm, it's really good. It's not exactly, it's not exactly the way I remember the Portuguese sweetbread to be. And I think that's just simply because of the egg yolks that are in the original recipe. However, it's really good. Very much like a brioche. And I think next time I might add some maple syrup, but I hope you give it a try. <laughs>